Welcome to another video tutorial from 2DGameArtGuru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to emulate the look of a lino cut. I'll be using basic shapes, blend modes, the pencil tool and tapered strokes using the pressure curve. Let's have a look at the setup. At the very bottom of the layer stack there is a background layer that contains a paper texture. On top of that I have a layer with the design, the silhouette made up of basic shapes combined as a compound and a layer set to erase containing the lines and shapes that will be cut out of the silhouette. To limit the effect of the erase, the silhouette and the lines are grouped in the design layer. Otherwise an erase goes through all layers below it in the layer stack. The strengths of the arrays can be adjusted via the layer opacity. By lowering the layer opacity, the silhouette will become transparent in those areas. Let's begin with the silhouette. I have a compound made up of three shapes. All of them were circles I converted to curves and modified with the note tool. On top of that is the layer set to erase. When I place a shape inside that layer now, it will cut through the compound and it cuts through my background, which should not happen. It turns out that this is a replicatable issue in version 1. While I was recording, I just created an additional layer, placed the erase layer and the compound inside. By turning the circle into a donut, I create the iris, adjust the inner radius to make it a little bit bigger, convert the donut into a curve and adjust it with the node tool. I duplicate the curve, mirror it and place it on the right hand side. While preparing this video, I created a set of strokes with different pressure curves that I was going to use. I even created them as styles. The problem with that approach is that a style can be applied to an existing line, but not to a future line. So it does not change how the next line will look. I found it easier to change the stroke widths and the pressure curve as I go. Seeing the cat's face is rather symmetrical, I decide to work with a symbol by mirroring and moving the symbol over to the right hand side. I create the symmetry and can work on both sides of the cat's face at the same time. When adding more elements, remember to work inside the symbol. For this video I used my graphic tablet and the pencil tool with the stabilizer on which is the easiest and fastest way to create the lines. If you work with a mouse you can use the pen tool rather than the pencil tool and use the note tool to curve. Holding control or command while dragging a line creates an instant copy which makes it faster. And copy multiple lines at the same time and edit them together with the transform mode turned on. I finally moved the duplicate of the symbol over to the right hand side. While I work on the left side, the lines get added automatically on the right. When doing hair, remember that it comes in different lengths and different angles. It is really perfectly aligned, so a little bit of variation in the angle and the lengths makes all the difference. Mirrored highlights are a pet peeve of mine. It's just a lazy look. In order to avoid that and keep with the symmetry, I center the highlights and use the circle tool rather than try and hand draw the perfect circle.
for the fur on the edge of the silhouette. Rather than adding lines, I continue to use the erase. I zoom out and add some long lines for the whiskers. When it comes to the more detailed shorter lines, I find it easier to draw those while having zoomed in on that area. The stabilizer tool makes it a lot easier to create manageable lines without too much unevenness or way too many nodes. Instead of a single curve, I use short lines and adjust their angle to define the shape. To create some sort of shading, I use longer lines placed closer together and go from there to shorter lines spaced out further. When I placed the duplicate of the symbol, I did not pay too much attention. It's now visible that the right side was a little bit too far over and needed to be adjusted. Adding more lines, I finally get to the stage where it's time to add some variation using thicker lines for lighter areas. In order to achieve a consistent look, I limited my strokes to three different widths and turned the scaling width objects off. So all my lines are either two, four, or eight points wide. I add the thicker lines to the lightest areas, like the top of the head and the ears. I use the thinnest lines for more detail like additional whiskers and to smooth the blending from lighter to darker areas. I use the same process of longer lines closer together in the lighter areas and less and shorter lines in the darker areas. When creating realistic or even semi-realistic designs, it helps to look at reference images as our idea of how things look quite often varies from how they really look. While using reference images, don't obsess over every detail. The overall feel is far more important than a single hair placed in the right spot. I find that variation and detail pay off. It takes a little more time, but it is worth it. And I found it a lot of fun to see simple lines turn into something complex and intricate. You might have noticed that I frequently zoom out to check the progress and it helps avoid creating detail that is too small to be visible. For this tutorial, I did speed up the video. It took just under 25 minutes to draw all the lines. Even though this process lends itself to something furry, 
you're not limited to furry or fluffy designs. You can use the lines for texture, shading or patterns. Experiment with more elaborate pressure curves or use brushes inside the erase layer. You can also work with multiple colors. For this little bird, I used the red, the black and the blue. I used an erase layer for the red, one for the red and the black and one for all three colors. To emulate the lino cut effect in this tutorial, I use basic shapes, the layer blend mode erase, the pencil tool and tapered strokes using the pressure curve. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like and I will see you again soon.